business owners and executives from around the valley. This is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. Hello everybody and welcome to Business Leaders right here on KMPH Fox 26. I'm Lance Cardoza and I have a great guest today, Nancy Irvin and she's with Harrison Co. And Nancy, thank you for being on my program. Well, thank you for inviting me. I was excited when I uh, we're talking to the producers and saying that Nancy's going to be on the show, and I have heard your name before. Huh. And uh, after we did a little pre-interview talking to each other, I'm like, we know some of the same business people. Mm -hmm. And uh, hearing your story and what you're doing today with uh, Harrison Co. Mm -hmm. was uh, very exciting. It's we have a sort of a, a similar background and how we got started at a young age with FFA. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I heard that too. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But Nancy, how did you? How did you get where you are today with Harrison Co? Great. Um, well, I, it's been a long road. I um, came up into Fresno in, in the, the late 90s and got a job working as an ag consultant with a local CPA firm called Baker Peterson and Franklin. Okay. Um, and the reason why I started working with Baker Peterson is because my background prior to that was all in agriculture, ag production, ag accounting. My husband and I ran a feedlot in Nevada for a while. I was a commodity trader for a while, did a lot of different things in ag. So I pitched myself as an ag consultant to Baker Peterson and, and joined them in 1999 and worked my way up through that firm um, helping ag clients. And one of my favorite ag clients at the time was Bob Smith Camp. Oh, Bob Smith Camp. Yes. Everybody, everybody in business in Fresno uh, know the name Bob Smith yeah. Camp and, and still we miss him. And, uh, he was a great, great man. He's a great guy and a great mentor and, and a champion of mine. He always promoted um, me as far as my abilities and, and giving me, uh, encouraging me and giving me opportunities to work on projects for them. Um, so one of the projects he called was about when he decided that he wanted to sell his business. And so he called me and asked me my opinion about selling his business, which yeah. was flattering in and of itself. Because he, did, he didn't do that with everybody. And, and I Bob, assume not. <laughs> Bob, Bob uh, he must have taken a liking to you that he saw something in you because uh, Bob, uh, Bob didn't do that with everybody, no. you know, yeah, people he trusted. He did. He, I think he trusted me and, and he used me to bounce ideas off of a lot and, and so I appreciated that. And um, when he said he wanted to sell his business, um, he says, you know, what do I need to do? And I said, well, a company your side, you need to hire an investment banker. And I explained to him sort of how, you know, there's business brokers and M&A advisors and investment bankers and, and he said, you know, well, what do they charge? And I explained to him what they charge. And he said, well, you're smart. Why don't you do it? And I yeah. said, well, thank you, but no. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, but we went through the process and helped him hire a firm. Um, and the firm that he hired was uh, ran by Bill Harrison mm -hmm. and a team that, that he had. And um, I was fortunate enough to work with Bob um, on his side of the table, we say, yeah. as, as a CFO in the transaction. Did, and, so, and people at home, too, uh, Bob Smith Camp and his company mm -hmm. and the company you sold, give a little background just on what that company was. Not everybody sure. knows. Of course. Yeah. So um, he actually had two companies. Lions Magnus um, was a, a, is, is a fruit syrups company, and then Wawona Packing is a, the, the largest organic stone fruit grower uh, in the United States. And, yeah. and he ran Wawona Packing with his son, Brent. And... Mm -hmm. um, and I had worked closely with Brent and, and the team there, so knew that company very well. So it was it was Wawona Packing that, that we worked on yeah. um, because of the, back, the ag background. And he saw something in you that uh, this, like you said, you, you wore many hats. Yes. So he saw that you could wear another hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was going to have you try it on. And so what was that process like? Because it was almost like baptism by fire. He's throwing you into it saying, I believe in you. Help me through this process. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was definitely a learning experience. And um, I, I, what I enjoyed the most was working with, with Bill Harrison and, and Sean Kalmasey and, and the rest of the team um, because these, these processes are very analytical and there's a lot of calculations and I love numbers and crunching numbers, yeah. but there's also sort of a human aspect to the whole thing. There's mm -hmm. issues that come up that have to be resolved. Um, so that was so much fun doing that, that um, when that project ended, I decided it, at my age to make a career move one more time and ask my partners if it was okay if I left the firm and become an investment banker. Um, so that's what I did, and, and then we started Harrison Co., and um, we 
we are we call ourselves the um, unapologetic advocate for family-owned businesses in the ag industry. In the ag industry. Yes. And we were talking about briefly, like I was saying, we had a conversation the other day about the ag industry itself and what um, they're the, sometimes the unsung heroes of our valley. Yeah. And really, uh, the statement of the breadbasket of the world tends to just get thrown around all the time, but uh, not backed up with a lot of substance. Right. And really, the families that have uh, really become those leaders in that industry in agriculture and right here in the valley. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure it was a big passion of yours when you wanted to get involved with that, with Harrison Co? Yeah, I, I mean, agriculture has always been a passion. And as you mentioned, um, I was involved in Future Farmers of America, um, FFA, when I was in high school. Um, even though I didn't come from a farming family, I did live on a self-sufficient farm in high mm -hmm. school. Milked a cow every day, raised our, our own fruits and vegetables and, and protein. Um, and where did you go to school? Um, up in the uh, Stockton area. In Stockton area, yeah. okay, so yeah. not far from the... Not far yeah, from, from here. here, yeah. 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 Um, and, and FFA was a great opportunity to explore all the different career paths. Um, since I didn't come from farming, the idea that you could have a career in farming seemed foreign. Yeah. But FFA definitely showed, no, there's a lot of different career paths uh, mm -hmm. in the ag industry. Absolutely. And, and you're in one of those paths today. Correct. And like I explain to people all the time, you don't have to be out there changing the water for in the ditch or driving the tractor, which they need those people. Correct. <laughs> they need them to be able to do those jobs. But at the same time, there's many jobs involved yeah. with agriculture and uh, have an advocate like yourself. Because sometimes I think with entrepreneurs, executive business, we get stuck in the trenches of doing what we do. Yeah. And someone needs to look from the outside in yeah. and say, I have some ideas on how we can help and be an advocate. It sounds like that's what you do with this organization. We, we do. So, you know, as, as a firm, we, we realize that there are a lot of family-owned businesses that are going through transitions right now. Um, in, the next generation has a different idea about what they want to do with the business. Um, and so they are looking for um, help in trying to decide what that next step is. Um, at the same time, there is a lot of interest in, in the valley and in agriculture from an investor standpoint. Investors are really starting to wake up to the fact that, that you know, food production is the most, the most important industry that you can be involved in. Um, it's also a really good investment. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people who are interested in looking at, at the valley and yeah. helping these these businesses make that transition. And be able to do that. That's, that's interesting. And I think, that's, uh, I think a lot of people don't... Uh, Think about that as an investment and a great investment to invest in our valley. Correct. And uh, talk about workforce that have created major workforce in the valley and continue to grow. Nancy, we're going to take a short break and when we come back, we'll talk about the 100 mile circle. Okay. Very important thing that you guys have uh, introduced to the industry of agriculture. Nancy Irvin, we'll be right back with Business Leaders. Welcome back, everybody, to Business Leaders. I'm here with Nancy Irvin with Harrison Co. Mm -hmm. And before the break, we were talking about you grew up not far from the Central Valley, just up in Stockton. Yeah. And uh, you didn't see, you had an appreciation for agriculture, but you didn't see where you were going to fit in right. that industry and found there's vast opportunities. And especially for young people today, more and more, I think, uh, they don't realize how many opportunities there are to work in the industry of ag. Yeah. And now with Harrison Co., uh, we talked a little bit about the 100 mile circle. We'll get into that a little bit. But you found yourself going over to Harrison Co. Mm -hmm. And uh, what uh, did you find? The, it was sort of like this is your home now, this is your passion. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And, and so tell me about your day to day. What, what led to the point of getting to the 100 mile circle and the okay. report to present that? Sure. So. Um, as a, a firm that works in the ag industry, it's important for us to, to reach out to industry leaders on a regular basis. So um, th the idea of the 100 mile circle actually came from a meeting that Bill Harrison and I had with Ryan Jacobson at the Fresno F um, Farm Bureau. Yeah. And it was about the time of the Garlic Gilroy, f or the Gilroy Garlic Festival, and, yeah. and we mentioned that. And, and Ryan mentioned kind of in passing, he says, you know, Fresno grows more garlic than Gilroy does. I was thinking about that when you were telling me that story. I was like, Ryan's gonna say something about oh, that yeah. right away. He's yeah. going to bring that up. He, 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 always, he always circle it back to like, do you know, <laughs> do you know? in Fresno County, yeah. Yeah, he knows his stuff. He does. And yeah, yeah he, he's, he's a great spokesperson for the area. And, 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 and Bill Harrison, who didn't necessarily come from an ag background, you know, through working with these, you know, the, the, the Smith Camps of the world, um, 
has really gained an appreciation for the work ethic of, mm -hmm. of the farm industry, the ag industry. And, and so we, we kind of jumped on that and was like, well, tell us more. And um, it, that grew into what we called the 100 mile circle, which was a, a study that we did where we put you know, Fresno in the middle. And if you drew a 100 mile radius around Fresno and looked at the productivity of that area, everything that's grown in that circle, it's, it's an amazing, it's less than 1% of the land mass of the United States but it produces more than 60% of the fruits and nuts and more than 30% of the vegetables in this 100-mile circle. Wow. And, and uh, that circle would go from Bakersfield to? Bakersfield, Modesto, Salinas. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So we, the 100 miles does reach into Salinas Valley where you know, there's a lot of vegetables grown in that area as well. Yeah. And, um, and there's, you know, obviously there's a lot of agriculture outside of, of the 100-mile circle, but this area is really unique mm -hmm. and, uh, and probably misunderstood. Um, as an example, there was an article in the New York Times the other day about the drought. And um, the, the article was actually really good, but if you read the comments mm -hmm. section, people were saying things like, you know, uh, I, I drove down the 99 one time and I looked out the window and clearly it's a desert and they shouldn't be growing food there. You know? <laughs> yeah. and, and we realized, you know, that's the kind of mentality that exists outside the circle. Yeah. And so we decided to do this research and write this report and um, we're trying to get it in front of politi politicians and leaders and decision makers because they're impacting our ability to continue to grow the food here that we do and, and we and just think they need And not be dependent on the rest of the world for Correct. our food when we could provide here in the United States. Yeah, the reg yeah. Reg regulations in California, in part of a report, and I, I can quote a lot of parts of it, but um, you know, the, the, the regulatory costs in California are incredibly high and as you know, a lot of businesses leave California and go to other states, but you know, a citrus grower can't just pick up their trees and, and necessarily go someplace go. else. Yeah. Um, which by the way, people think of citrus, they think of Florida. Mm -hmm. um, California grows, I think it's 10 times more fresh citrus than the state of Florida. Florida grows mostly citrus for orange juice. Yeah. So if you want fresh citrus, it comes from here. But the the uh, the acreage of citrus continues to go down, that the cost of regulations continue to go up, the acreage goes down, and as acreage goes down, we import more. And that's yeah. something that we don't want to see happen. We, we want to keep our food grown here. Yeah, and, and more and more with those regulatory, you're talking about the restrictions for farmers uh, to operate. Correct. Know, and the lack of water uh, at times, and I don't think it's a lack of water, but the, the lack of allo allocation of water. Correct. Uh, so part of that too. So that's part of your advoc being an advocacy for those those ag-based uh, industry companies that are dealing with this on a daily basis. Correct. We, we want to make sure that the, the conversation um, brings all the facts to the table. And, and so, for instance, on the water side, yes, we're in the middle of a drought. Um, however, if you look at the amount of precipitation in California over the last 120 years, it hasn't really gone down on average. It has yeah. stayed the same. Unfortunately, what's happened is uh, we are seeing more of a shift from snowpack to rain. Mm -hmm. um, and California hasn't built a new reservoir since 1976. Mm -hmm. And we are not, we don't have the infrastructure to capture that rain because we don't, the snowpack was a natural reservoir. And without yeah. the natural reservoir, we need more man made reservoirs. Mm -hmm. So we're not capturing the water the way that, that we should. And, and, you know, once we capture it, where it goes, you know, that's a decision that has to be made. And, and there's a lot of misperceptions out there about how the water is used and, and yeah. agriculture, agriculture um, using too much water in people's opinion. But it, it, there's, a, there's a, a line out there, you know, it takes a gallon to grow a single vomit. And kind of our response is it takes water to grow everything. Everything. Yes, <laughs> <No>. everything. <laughs> yes. And a lot of our water goes to Southern California just to uh, grow life itself. Correct. You know, and right. it, it comes, just runs right through. So yeah. it, uh, like you said, water is the life force. It is. Of everything. And uh, we truly, when I say bread basket of the world, the Citra Valley really could be and is, uh, like you said, uh, market initiatives out of Florida make you think that's where all the citrus comes right. from, but really we're producing it here. Yes. And we don't want that to go away no. because with that, jobs go away yeah. uh, and, and everything in between. Nancy, very interesting about the 100 mile circle. I want to talk a little more about that before we, uh, when we come back from the break, but also talk about uh, when you were going to school and you were an FFA, yes. just like me, I was yes. a reporter in FFA. and. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, you don't work in ag. And I, yeah, we do, everybody. Yeah. You've sold 
pickup trucks or cars, you work in ag, everybody does in the Central Valley, yeah. and we, we all do. I think we just, the lack of vision, know that those companies employ people that spend money in our, our economy. So we'll be right back. Nancy Irvin with Harrison Co. And we're talking about the 100 Mile Circle and also uh, her career in the business. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, to Business Leaders. Lance Cardoza, and I'm sitting here with Nancy Irvin. And Nancy with Harrison Co., mm -hmm. we're talking about the 100-mile circle before we went on the break. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about also we have something in common. We were talking about I was a, a reporter in FFA, so yes. Future Farmers of America. I don't know if they call that Future Farmers of America anymore. They've changed the name. I, I think it's just FFA now, my understanding. Yeah, just FFA. So it's everything's got to have a... Yeah. It's got to be changed over the years for whatever reason. Yeah. But FFA, the reporter, yes. and we had a little uh, saying, and I was trying to figure out why I became reporter, because they have all these different uh, um, appointments mm -hmm. uh, on the board of uh, the FFA, and reporter had the simple just a <laughs> script. So it was like when you stood up, the reporter stationed by the flag. That's all I knew. Yes. And then you had your little piece, and I can't remember it, but it was short. Yes. Uh, when you joined FFA, and as a young person, yeah. and I love to always encourage young people and open their minds and become entrepreneurs. What was it for you that drew you to FFA? And uh, what did it mean to you as yeah. a young mind yeah. looking at this industry? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I, I've always loved animals. And, and so we, like I said, I grew up, or had a self-sufficient farm. And so it kind of made sense to, to take the ag classes. The FFA side was a little bit more by accident. I had a friend who's, a, you know, one of my best friends in high school was involved. And yeah. I, I do have a funny story because she was, you know, the cheerleader, um, really gregarious, outgoing. I was very shy. Um, you know, nerdy bookworm kind of a person. And um, she and I both competed in, in public speaking uh, together. She encouraged me to do it. And, um, and I remember going in thinking, you know, if I could just get second place, because yeah. she, to her, yeah. you know, if I could just get second place, I'd be so happy. And we went to the first level of competition and, um, and I actually won. Oh. And she got second. And I remember the two, first and second, went on to regions, and, I, and she was thinking, well, that was a fluke, you know, next time yeah. I'll win, yeah, yeah, she yeah. said. And we went to regions, and, and I, I won again. You won again. And, you know, kind of got that taste and <laughs> said, this is fun. <laughs> this is fun, and I sort of know what I'm doing. I know what I'm yeah. doing, and yeah. went on in one state and went back to nationals, the nationals um, wow. for, for that the particular nationals. speech. Wow. Yeah. And the nationals were held in the Kansas still, City back They're always then. in Kansas City, still there, right? No, it's no, I think they're in years? Tennessee now. Oh, it's moved around, okay, because yeah. I remember Kansas City when I was in yes. FFA. And, uh, and, I, and that's what you see some of those people, because I went back and I thought about when I heard you were also FFA. Where do those people end up? Yeah. And they're working in the industry still. You know, at some point or some fashion, their company does business with ag. Yeah. And uh, we're talking also before we went to the break about 100 Mile Circle and what you've been working on with Harrison Co. And, and Bill and the team there about trying to get agricultural, uh, the agricultural industry, what, what's next? Right. Because I think the time is now right. that the industry has to start to react and really look at what is happening yeah. uh, in our valley. But uh, what, what do you feel? What is the next step for ag and, and the big industries and, and even the mom and pop organizations that are struggling yeah. to what does the future look like? Yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I wish I had a, a perfect answer for that. And I'm afraid I, I don't. Um, mm -hmm. I think all we can do is continue to be a voice, um, you know, kind of keep pounding the pavement and knocking on doors and, and, and bringing uh, awareness to a situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think part of the problem in the ag industry is we tend to talk to ourselves a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, what's interesting about bringing an investment banking firm, which we deal with a lot of, like I said, we do deal with a lot of investors. We deal with a lot of Wall Street, mm -hmm. um, with a lot of people who are not from the Valley. And we're telling the story to them and they get it. And they see that this is a incredibly valuable area, mm -hmm. um, it, that it needs to be protected and preserved. And, um, and we're inviting them to, to participate in that. And so that it's not just the you know the multiple generations that live here that keep fighting and struggling we're, we're trying to bring this message to to people with power and influence outside of the area and you do you you fill that gap to where like you said they tend to talk within each other yeah to each other the advocate they call ryan jacobson at the fresno county farm bureau yeah. they call the kings county farm bureau they call their different farm bureaus and complain and and try to figure out a plan 
but a lot of times too, like you said, they're they're talking within each other, yeah. and sometimes they have to try to have an understanding with not not necessarily the other side, but the general public to what is affecting ag, right. and w what is that trickle down effect all the way through the process, Correct. and without. Uh, water storage and proper water storage. What does that mean to our valley uh, on both sides? Mm -hmm. And have a conversation through. But a lot of times they, they talk within their camps, but yeah. they tend to don't uh, go across the, the borders. And a company like yours with Harrison Co. is a great uh, tool for that, yeah. to be able to be an advocate. Mm. Uh, what do you enjoy the most about your day now doing, uh, working in this industry? What, what, what's the thing that just drives you more and more? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think the thing that I enjoy the most is, I call it connecting the dots, um, and that can either be between people, uh, maybe on two sides of an issue, um, and helping them find sort of common ground, or it could be in, in a financial analysis and, and trying to find that common thread, um, mm -hmm. you know, from a number standpoint. Yeah. Uh, all of it is sort of connecting the dots, and, and that's something I've always enjoyed doing, and, and, and I like sort of that left brain, right brain function mm -hmm. and, and that's what I enjoy doing this a lot because it, it does involve both. Sometimes it's hard jumping from left to right brain no. <laughs> in between the projects, but that that's the part that's the stimulating. And and then also constantly learning something new. There's nothing like up starting a career at my age, which I, I <laughs> you know <laughs> It's always a challenge. It, brand new career, why not? You know? Yep. Uh, why, why keep doing the same thing over and over? Learn something new as long as you can. Awesome. I love it. And uh, you find the solution to the problems. And, yeah. and we all have our problems. And the, the ag industry is one that needs to look at the future. And they are. And you're a great support to them. Nancy, thank you for being on my program. Thank I you. appreciate it. And uh, every Tuesday morning right here on KMPH Fox 26, I bring you business leaders. If Tuesday mornings at 11 a.m., make sure you mark your calendar, and we'll talk with different business leaders in the industry throughout the Valley and abroad. Until next week on Tuesday morning, I'm Lance Cardoza, Nancy with Harrison Co. We'll talk to you next week.